Towards a New Socialism. Section. Differential Payment for Education slash Skill. We first examine the relationship between skill or education level and individual payment for work. In capitalist economies, relatively skilled or educated workers are generally better paid. What are the reasons for this? To what extent do these reasons also apply in a socialist economy? One generally accepted explanation for at least part of this salary premium is that it functions as compensation for the expense of education or training and for earnings foregone. The extent to which workers in capitalist economies are responsible for the financing of their own education or training is variable. But in all cases, there is an element of earnings foregone, in that people could earn more, at first, by going straight into employment after the completion of basic education than they received during the years of additional education. In order to generate a sufficient supply of educated labor, therefore, the more highly educated workers must be paid a premium once they move into employment. So the argument goes. How realistic is this? Is it really a sacrifice to be a student compared, for instance, to leaving school and working on a building site? Compared to many working class youngsters, students have an easy time. The work is clean. It is not too demanding. There are good social facilities and a rich cultural life. Is this an experience that demands financial compensation in later life? Even if the compensation argument is an accurate reflection of reality in capitalist countries, this does not mean that professional workers should obtain the same sort of differentials in a socialist system. The costs of education and training, then, would be borne fully by the state. Not only would the education itself be free, as it has been in Britain, but in addition, Students could receive a regular wage during their period of study. Study is a valid and socially necessary form of work. It produces skilled labor as its output and should be rewarded accordingly. So there need be no individual expense or earnings loss on the part of a student for which compensation is required. In present-day society, the class system prevents a large part of the population from ever reaching their full potential. Children grow up in working-class neighborhoods without ever realizing the opportunities that education presents. Their career aspirations are stunted from infancy. Many assume, with some realism, that all that is open to them is menial work, and who needs an education for that? Some of this is just a reflection of the jobs that children see open to their parents, and these jobs would not themselves change if a revolution in society instituted equal pay. Equal pay would not raise the educational and cultural level of a people overnight. But the democratic presumption behind it would, over time, work in this direction. Equal pay is a moral statement. It says that one person is worth as much as any other. It says, Citizens, you are all equal in the eyes of society. You may do different things, but you are no longer divided into upper and lower classes. Talk of equality of educational opportunity is hollow, so long as hard economic reality reminds you that society considers you inferior. Beyond what it buys, pay is a symbol of social status, and a leveling of pay will produce a revolution in self-esteem. Increased comfort and security for the mass of working class people would be accompanied by a rise in their expectations for themselves and their children. 
If society values people equally in terms of money, it encourages them to aspire to equality in terms of education and culture. Education is an enrichment that goes beyond money, but to him that hath shall be given. At present, educational opportunity runs alongside money. Once working class people win economic equality, they will have the confidence to seek cultural and educational equality for themselves and their children. In the process, a huge economic potential will be liberated. Human creativity and ingenuity is our ultimate resource. Develop that through education and economic progress follows. End of section.